Salford Jets, I'm Max Green, the lead singer, Stuart on guitar. Dick uh, on bass. Dick Eric Farmer from the bass is your oldest. Hi guys. He's our... Uh, she and me, she and me, We won't do all the singing that. We've, uh, we formed the band in 76, like a lot of the punk bands. And uh, got our first record deal, end of 77. And uh, first single came out beginning in 78. Walking around the town town, looking at the squares. We've done, um, I think we did about four years. We, we finished around 1980, 81-ish. And this is the first time that we played together for... Okay. About 15 years, something like that. It's good word, Crikey. It's right. 20, year, 20 years since we've actually formed the band. Crikey. Right. Oh, can you tell me a little bit about the atmosphere and the general vibe what's going around when the band first started? Well, when we first started, I think, I think that particular time, everybody was dead innocent. I mean, we were quite old for a punk band, to be honest. Uh, yeah, obviously, Eddie wasn't. <laughs> I mean, we, we, were all, we, were, we were all in our late twenties, really, around that time. Um, some of the guys were in the mid twenties from the band, yeah. but I'm not saying that. I think that was still valid. I mean, we only found out later on that like 999 and the Stranglers and UK subs were all older than us anyway. You know, even and the Clash weren't that far behind. Uh, it just gave bands generally freedom, you know, to work to work in an environment that hadn't existed prior to that. It was all heavy, silly, heavy rock bands, you know what I mean? And it gave, it gave bands a chance to just to play what they wanted to play, play their own materials. Okay. You're asking the question. So, uh, presuming people who get to watch this know nothing about punk, nothing about what's going on this weekend, how would you explain to them what's going on here? I, I said to the audience today, it's not, do it, it's not nostalgia. It's not, a, it's not a punk revival, it's rock and roll music. And it's rock and roll music has always been there. I'm, I, am, I am annoyed that the, the sort of conventional music press have totally ignored us. We might as well not be here. I mean, what are you going well, the thing is, in the 70s, punk wasn't just a new thing. Punk was a shot in the air for rock and roll. That's what it was. It was to make everybody get out of that, oh God, we don't sound like Deep Purple shit, you know what I mean? Like, and what punk did was, even though at the time I was not part of it, it just gave rock and roll a shot in the arm and it brought you down to the street level, which is what we were doing anyway. And I think the Sulphur Jets was like, I didn't call it punk, I think it was street rock and roll. Yeah, you had the, just, I've got to ask, got to ask yeah, it. You, you, yeah, you got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. you had, um, at that time, you know, number one after number one. How did you see punk at that time? Yeah, it was just bands, you know, guys. Really? You're part of the bass at your rollers? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, you all of them. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You tell us about, you know, that, that's, quite a, that's quite a contradiction to what punk was trying to do. I mean, how do you feel about being a part of... Well, I've seen a magazine thing, though. Uh, so we they were saying they want to be basically rolling in America. Yeah, wow. Well. The guy blonded the records coming around, so there was a lot of, a lot of time. I mean, that was just that. We were 74, 75. Punk rolling in 76. I mean, Eric, Eric's right with that. I remember being in a, in a, a band around like 74, 75, and uh, the girls coming up to us afterwards and saying, oh, um, we've got like we've, we've, we've like we're following the base city rollers when they very first started having the hits and we think like you, you not look the same but the same attitude to a certain extent. I thought it was brilliant. I'll be honest with you because like I just wanted girls to scream at me. <laughs> did you know what I mean? I mean that, that was that was the ultimate. I mean I was like you see really pissed off and, and he got all the screamers and that. Was, that was, even still do now. Even now 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 I've met him these right. all these years on now we're friends. I still hate it. Right, it's a pop. These guys were the biggest thing in the world. They were absolutely. Thing yeah. in the world. No, I think like, that's right. No, no, no. Well, in 74, like two years before the conference, you know, there was the glam, uh, a lot of American kids, and we were one of the, the first young new British bands to play for them. And then you had the, uh, and that was the thing, you don't take it back to being just guys who make the tail or let the make up, just if you've got a dead wing or whatever, sort of frills like. 
and punk was actually the, the best thing that ever happened to the British music business. Yeah. It, it was like, shutting down. It, it, it was shutting down. It was like a drug. It was like a I mean, it was self destructive. Like if if you want um, an in nature of the beast, though, wasn't if it? If you want an interesting little hybrid between. Uh, the rollers and, and, and punk bands. Uh, you ought to have a look at videos of a, of, of a band called Slick. And Midge Yo was in Slick, and they were a Scottish band. And they were sort of a, a team band, but with, with credibility. And, and in a way, they, they were almost a bridge. It's very interesting. They're number one in 1976. But if you'd have looked at the band, they, they all, all had like sort of uh, tight pants on, not flares and baseball boots and, and stuff like that. And I remember thinking, watching Slick, that, that, that they'd done something that was unusual. And I mean, they tend to stop. I say Majo was the lead singer in Slick. Anyway, well, well, the thing is, so I, I remember being in, uh, sorry, the kid, but, uh, I remember being in New York in 64, uh, 75, and the guys down the fields was there, 16 magazine, which was like the big team thing. And Daddy was showing his videos of the New York Dolls and stuff like that. And that was, that, that was, it was almost, I don't know, I want to call it, it was in that, that Iggy, what yeah. kind of thing. The uh, whole underground, all those guys. Wayne, how many used to dress up Wayne County? Wayne County, yeah, yeah. It was all that American, New York, like, sleaze scumbag scene. It was, I've got a lot of that, and you've got a lot of the youngest from, but the, the pop lines for a brief moment in time I sprayed the cartel all major records. Very, very brief moment in time. And quickly realised it was looking back over. About a year and a half, that's all. But for a year a year and a bit it did it, you're right. They brought them a lot of record labels came on like Raven Records, Wilty John and all this and just for a little while. We did never have got a record deal without punk ever. Not a chance. Not writing songs about I mean I was writing songs about Cars, more bikes, uh, relationships, fighting. fun out of fighting, like young men fighting other young men. What do you like? You know, who's going to give you a record deal? Some of people fighting in the street. Nobody. So, there we are. It's been a great weekend. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi. Moving on to the beginning of this year, how did you react when you heard the pistols were in front me? Right. I think so. Yeah, great. Yeah, I was. I think it's a great idea, and again, the, the press crucified them. I mean, they've had one one good review. Well, even the good reviews have been done reluctantly. And it, it, one of the isms that we're not allowed, that you're allowed to take away this, we're not allowed racism and sexism, and, and you're not allowed to to, to, to ridicule people because they don't look perfect. I'll tell you what, you can take the piss out of anybody if they're older. No, I, I find that. Don't take the piss out of me because I'm, I'm like 40 odd years old. We'll, we'll, we'll get in my face and do it. But I tell you what, that's out of order. Because we all grow old. I hear people now saying they, they preface something and the criticism is prefaced with old or boring old. Dinosaurs. You think, Hang on a minute, come here. But, but no, no, Jesus Christ, how, how dare you? Have your ism, you're allowed that ism. I'm older than you, so you know better. And what I'm doing is worthless, and that's crap. It's ageism. It's ageism, though. Yeah, yeah. But it's attitude to things that come out. That's what it should be. The other thing is, you think that with punk this way, it was an attitude and a strange bed follow. And I like with it because, of course, all ska and reggae music. But if you you're a couple of me, but maybe when you were in it, like specials and bands like that, and madness and all that was all part of it. And the selector, you know. But, but reggae music in general, uh, uh, Jamaica or all these ska bands, I mean, they, they really, the two things were like strange managers, isn't it? Ska and reggae and this sort of punk thing. But the attitude was the same. It was always protest type. It's a protest type of music. It always has been. Well, we're getting a bit old for all now because we go on put our slippers on, you know. I mean, have a couple of Not, just not, just not, not necessarily so. <laughs> well, right. if you can afford coke, I guess. So, what do you make of the uh, bands that come along sort of 1980, 81? There was bands like GBH, yeah. the Exploit. That was very. A lot more hardcore than the 76 yeah. way. You mean like the I scene, don't you? Yeah. I think, I mean, you, they're, they're credib I'm not going to lessen their credibility, but uh, you've got to see them as being like a second generation well, thing. I that, mean, that became as it's grown to a movement. They created a movement which, in many ways, was very, was actually quite racist and quite right wing as well. And I don't think that was right. I mean, they all they all remind me remind me of the Metallica and of heavy metal 
When I can listen to somebody say like ACDC or a Death Leopard, we look like a Metallica. They are the, the sort of they are the GBH and the exploited of the of the heavy metal scene, and and, and they are GBH and like that are that sort of like a sort of an offspring of punk. I mean, I don't I see I don't see that as proper punk. I see it as almost. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong. But it's pantomime punk. Yeah, well. I mean, like in the, you know, in, in the late so, 70s, yeah. you had folk music, right? In the late 80s oh, and then early 90s, you got cyber. And as soon as you start putting these, you know, prefixes, you know what I mean? The terminology and the music as well, and the attitude was out. Because then it's all about image and what you're doing. And, and, and I, I just don't think that that's what punk was about. Punk was in your face, fuck off your bastard music. And that was end of story. I can, I can, I can identify with that. All right? Please, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So what was the, uh, to you, what was the best thing that came out of punk? In, what, for us or...? or no, for you personally? Band. For us personally, the chance to get a record deal. I think, I think the fear of us, especially yeah. so, we never have had. We never had that. We never had that. We never had that. We had that. We never had that. We never got that. We never got that. I agree with you. And if you said to us which band, I mean, I thought I thought that Clash was going to rock and roll band as, as, there, as there ever was. Yeah. So there we are. Yeah. So that's what came out of it musically. Oh, so what you do know, you yeah. Yeah. And it also, and at, the, and at the time, at the time, there was lots of bands striving for this perfect sound. And and, and as, as little as I liked it, I found myself doing the same thing. And then when Punk happened, even though I wasn't really part of the the major punk thing. The edge that it gave the music was where I, 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 I actually lived because I liked that sort of aggressive sound and I hated that perfection that people were giving to music and, and that's the legacy that I enjoyed from punk music. It just gave us the, we could go on and we could be raw and that's all I ever wanted to be, real raw. And we did this afternoon yes. and on and did it. The other thing I love about punk bands are not read and know music really. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know why, don't you? Because we were like only other band was on the other room. Bad times. We thought were crap. We <laughs> should. Oh, yeah, could be, could be that as well. We should have gone on about uh, four o'clock. Uh, by the time we went on, Jane Count was on in the other room. But I mean, the people that were there when we were on. They all stayed and some more came in and they got into the songs and that's all that, again, that's all that matters. I mean, you, we're not there, it's not a star thing. You're, um, you're a DJ. Yeah. So, so, the thing that you sort of fit into all the same. You must make a megawatt to a DJ. Oh, like to, I'd, like to, I'd, like, I'd like to make more megawatts than I'm making. I should be making more than I am. Gives, oh, me, a oh, gives oh. me a chance to, uh, better than driving a truck for a living, which is what I was doing. Yeah, but you only became a DJ after, really after the Jets. The, the Jets led to me getting on the radio. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, it's funny enough, I it. My, my, my right with it at the moment is I don't, I don't earn the sort of money that everybody thinks I wish I did. Mm -hmm. So you seem pretty clued up on the music scene still. Do you follow it? Well, yeah, they do, you see. I mean, you just do, don't you? I wouldn't say I was absolute. don't particularly like dance music, but I know all the, all the sort of guitar bands around at the moment, casting the boot, like Boo Radners and Dodgy and, and the Cardigans. And, I, mean, I know what they're playing, uh, I quite like a lot of the stuff they're doing. Well, I think they're still, they're still borrowing, it's like Oasis or Westwood, that growth. There's like a. Uh, I mean, we're we're wrong. Wrong. We all bother when we started, yeah, of course you do. But when we started playing, we grew up with all the words, me and the Manchester bands, like the Hollies, etc., etc. We were young kids and we were learning people just coach all the time. We covered a lot of this stuff. And now we find a lot of bands like Oasis who have a more attitude than maybe we did then because everything was a bit of a proper rave magazine, rave, you've got a show coming, it's like, you know, we like other zones and I don't know. You know. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's the same sort of thing. Good, the good housekeeping, good housekeeping, good housekeeping they, magazine. They yeah. Very heavily on Blur and Paul Flores, who really like very heavily on music in the 60s, which we did because we grew up with it. A lot of that comes into punk, a lot of the stuff we did, and other yeah, bands do, comes out in punk in a more aggressive way. But they're doing that now. I don't like it. I never, I don't even have Max Michael's. I don't like it, that's that. But good to you, you make a living out of this business. They do great, fabulous, and definitely is fun. They hate these. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, I'm finally, uh, in as few words as possible, <laughs> and finally, yeah. and finally. what does punk mean to you? I think the end of one era, the beginning of another, yeah. and I think it's done a lot for, I think it changed the music pattern from now on in. 
Um, I think a lot of it's been sort of reclaimed again. It's because, of course, it's always been run by accountants and guys in offices who can't play a bloody note music. They have no idea. And the, and the people out there actually doing it, they always get the hardest bit. Um, uh, but I think it has changed, and I think it's that's great. I think it changed for the better. It had to change for the better. I, I think it's part of the true spirit of rock and roll. I, 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 when I I listen to folk music, it reminds me of, of Elvis's stuff in 54 and 55 and a, a very young Gene Vincent, a very, very naive, I, I think no, young bands playing with like the very first electric I guitars. It made music as well much more accessible to, and that's to why everybody. It's been a rock and roll. If you watch the very old film from the 60s, like, um, uh, like uh, the old guys in America, like uh, uh, Richard, it's a great film in about 1958. And it's playing for this very, very broken white audience. They're all sat on the table and just like that. And it bows at the end and all that. You know, it, that's all wrong. And that's great. That's yeah. all true. Punk to me is, is attitude. It's an attitude that really didn't have anything to do with music when it started. But it, it sort of cut out the middlemen, the managers, the guys in the suits, and then the guys with the guitars that sold the talents to get the guitars, got on stage and did the stuff. And it's very perverse way, it's always going back to express or bongo when you guys are like, yeah. Hey guys, it's all this, let's, let's have a show here. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do it up, let's get all the yeah. kids in. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, two, yeah. two guitars <laughs> and then just do it. Just do it good, right? Okay? That's one, yeah.